some of my powers. You see, I, uh... <laughs> no, I mean, that ring thing, it's blown your mind, right? But a lot of people wonder how it happened. And uh, when I was younger, you know, in, in my 20s, months ago now, I, um, <laughs> I always fancied having the powers of ESP. I always thought it would be really nice if I could tell what somebody was thinking. You know, if I knew what birthday present to buy somebody or what to buy a girl if we went out for a meal, something like that. I just thought it'd be great if I just had these little powers of ESP. And I, I looked and looked and I searched and searched to try and find out how I could do it. And I had no idea. Until one Sunday night, I was falling asleep in bed and I was just reading a magazine. And right at the back I saw a little, a little advert in the back of the magazine. It said, learn the powers of ESP. I thought, that's a coincidence. <laughs> How did they know? <laughs> it said you had to ring this phone number, so I ran this phone number and apparently I had to go to New York. I had to go to New York and I had to spend three years in New York studying under a man called Professor Hoffman. It was a difficult job, he was a heavy man. <laughs> All I had to do is study for three years. And during that three years, I had to credit, 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 I had to, I had to do something that's difficult to say. <laughs> I had to correctly predict a playing card that somebody was thinking of three times in a row. If I managed to do it three times in a row, I was going to get the commemorative wallet from the ESP testing laboratories in Lexington, New York. For three years I tried, ladies and gentlemen, and for three years I failed, but I failed in a very unusual way. You see, somebody would be thinking of the Four of Hearts, and I would name the Five of Hearts. Somebody would be thinking of the Ten of Clubs, I would name the Jack of Clubs. I was always off by one card. Trust me, that's annoying. <laughs> for three years I tried and for three years I failed. Until eventually it was time to leave. It was Christmas Eve, I hadn't seen my family for three years. Up mock. I was about to fly out on the Ten o'clock flight. It was eight o'clock in the evening, I was already late to get to the airport. We were in the commemorative buildings of the Lexington Laboratories, where they make the commemorative wallet, strangely enough. My bags were packed. I was about to leave. Professor Hoffman, with a tear in his eye, gave me a hug, shook my hand, and as I was about to leave and walk out the door with my taxi waiting downstairs, he said, John, give it a try one more time. I spent three years with this man. I looked back at him, I said, all right, one more time. He jumped up with joy. He was excited. For some reason, he seemed to think it was going to work this time. He rushed out of the office and he searched the building. We were the only people left in. Just one light on the ninth floor, snowing outside, but the janitor, two floors above, with a brown, dusty coat, the same colour as his complexion. He found him and he dragged him down into our office. He'd never been allowed in before. He looked at all the strange charts on the wall. He explained to him what he had to do. Just think of a card, he said. Write it on a piece of paper so you can't change your mind. The janitor thought of a card. I named the two of hearts. He was thinking of the two of hearts. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first time in three years I'd ever got even one right. I would have been having to stop right there. But no, Professor Hoffman, he was keen. He rushed downstairs. He searched up and down the streets, found a little old lady with her, her hands full of shopping bags. The last shot before Christmas. He brought her upstairs in the lift. He wasn't cruel. <laughs> <laughs> he sat down in the chair and gave her a hot cup of coffee. She was a bit bewildered, a bit bemused. She kept giggling to herself. She thought it was exciting. He said, think of a card. She thought of the four of diamonds. I did the four of diamonds. I just had to do it one more time if I was going to win the commemorative wallet from the ESP testing laboratories in Lexington. <laughs> he went downstairs again and took the lady down with him. He looked around the streets and found the taxi driver that was waiting for me. A tall, retired basketball player, just driving a taxi in his spare time. He brought him upstairs, a big Jamaican smile on his face. Not Professor Hoffman, the other fella. <laughs> <laughs> he brought him through the door, he banged his head, he sat him down in a chair. He explained what was to happen. <coughs> the man thought of a card. I said the Jack of Clubs. He was thinking of the Jack of Clubs. 
And because of that, I got the commemorative wallet from the ESP testing laboratories in Lexington, New York. Thank you. I thought it'd be quite nice if I could try and teach somebody that skill that took me three years to learn in a few short minutes tonight. And what I've actually done is I've actually placed a card in my wallet. I'm going to try and transmit that card to somebody in the audience. I'm going to try and transmit that card to you, sir. What's your name? Paul. Paul, wonderful. Paul, I'm going to try and transmit the card to you. We're going to do it a section at a time. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and transmit the colour of the card to you. All right? <laughs> <laughs> In case people think I cheat, Paul, I'm going to write it down on the pad. Could be a red card, could be a black card. I'm going to write it down. <laughs> be perfectly honest, Paul. You may be picking up mild vibrations, I don't know. We all start somewhere. Do you think the card I've got in my wallet is a red card or a black card? Black. You think it's a black card? <laughs> no, it's actually a red card, Paul. <laughs> Paul, don't panic. You were only off by one. <laughs> That's how I started! <laughs> Paul, you didn't get the colour. I did say it was a red card. I'm going to try and tra transmit the suit for you. It could be a heart or it could be a diamond. Concentrate very, very hard on whether you think it's a heart or a diamond. Don't let me influence you. <laughs> in my wallet is a heart or a diamond? A diamond. You think it's a diamond? No, it's actually a heart, Paul. You're off by one. You're obviously not picking up these subtle little things that are coming through, Paul, so I'll forget writing it down, OK? What I'm going to ask you to do now is just to try and think of the value of the card. I've told you it's red, I've told you it's a heart, but it could be anything from an ace through to a king. It's not an ace, that would be ridiculous, too easy. Also, it's not in the wallet. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul, don't mess me about. It took me three years to get as far as you've got now. What card do you think is in the wallet? Seven. Seven of hearts. <coughs> Watch carefully, ladies and gentlemen. He said the seven of hearts. And inside the wall, there is indeed one card and one card only, and that card happens to be the six of hearts. <laughs> no, no. You were off by one, Paul. But what's strange is this time, I did actually know that you would be off by one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh,